Patanjali Mudra, offering from the heart with compassion and gratitude, preparing us to offer freely the feeling of receptivity and divine inspiration flowing into the heart space. Please come into a prone position onto your stomach. Make that full prostration of an offering, offering up this practice and its fruits for the benefit of all in a spirit of generosity and benevolence, goodness and charity. Offering everything up willingly, gladly. And then bring the hands back to either side of the chest. Come into cobra pose. When you're ready, curl the shoulders up. Press the fingertips down. And if you feel the urge to move in that cobra, find some freedom. Discover what works today. And release slowly back down, keeping the hands where they are. Relax, breathe into the back. And then prepare for cobra again by hugging the legs to the midline, pressing down through the tops of the feet, push down through the hips and pubic bones so you can curl the head up, holding the steady cobra and breathing generously. Breathe as though the whole body breathes. Good, last breath. And releasing back down. Now if you would, stretch the arms straight back towards the back of the mat. The palms facing down for locust. And lift the legs up. If you wish also to lift the shoulders up. Like you're flying through the air, like a skydiver. And, and slowly release down. Resting chin to one side, heels open. Feeling your heart, your breath, and all the goodness. And preparing once again for this Shalabhasana, curling up or lifting the legs up. Lifting the shoulders up. An option here is to clasp the hands behind the back. Draw the shoulder blades in and down. If you have trouble clasping hands, you can have a strap to connect the hands behind. And one more breath to lift. And release back to the mat, chin to the other side, letting the heels open. And the breath reach deep into the lower back, nourishing the body generously with this breath.
And then I'll ask you to push back up to table pose and kneeling position. And we'll do puppy dog on Hatasana. So keeping the hips above the knees, walk the hands forward. Inhale, lift up through the armpits, lengthen the back of the neck. And on the exhale, pull the navel in and scoop the chest through the arms towards the thighs. The forehead may or may not touch the mat. You may have a block under your forehead. Rising up with an inhalation, walk the hands back under the shoulders and keep walking the hands back till you're sitting on the heels in hero pose. Once again with Pushpanjali Mudra, remembering this is an offering, a generous giving contribute to the, the healing of all of humanity. So you can take it deeper into this thigh stretch, walk the hands behind the heels, lift up the hips, and lengthen the tailbone. So, Lay back, supta virasana, onto the elbows or back of the head. <laughs> Trying to keep the knees down, the thighs together. Press down through the toenails, activate the shins and ankles. And when you need to, release, inhale, lift the head up. And curl the uh, come to kneeling so you can curl the toes under and lift into downward dog. Experiment with this first down dog. Walking the knees, adjusting the feet and hands. When you find a foundation that will support you with steadiness, and hold strong with the hands and engage in the ab abdominal muscles. Breathing generously into the back, the back of the neck, the kidneys. So the whole body benefits from the breath. Look forward, step right foot up between the hands. Lower left knee down to low lunge. When you're ready, lift the hands up. They can come to the knee as you adjust the shoulders, engage the core, and clasp hands behind the back or hold the strap there so that you can draw the shoulder blades down and in. Good. Nice. Engage in the thighs and the hips so you have steadiness. And then bring the hands behind the head, interlacing the fingers there. Opening the elbows, lift the chin up. Now press the head against the hands as much as the hands are resisting so that you can have a lot of confidence going into this back bend. The heart opening, giving more generously, more freely, breathing more easily. And release the hands down. All right. And let's take to the other side. 
You can switch the legs through downward dog or any way that you prefer. And bring the left foot forward, right knee down. Adjusting the legs for stability. Bring the hands up in stages or if you're ready to clasp hands behind the back. Hmm. Engage through the pelvic floor and the hips, the buttocks. Engage for stability. And then bring the hands behind the head and relacing the fingers there. Press the head back to the hands as the hands lift the head up. With an open heart, breathe the generosity of breath to nourish the body, calm the mind. And slowly release the hands back down. And we'll go back to high kneeling position. Oh, let's do a downward dog. <laughs> you gotta have a counter pose there for that back then. <sighs> Walk it out, stretch it out. Breathe through that downward dog. Breathing into the lower back. Fabulous. And lower the knees down for camel pose. All right, we stretch the thighs, warmed up the back. Let's do a deeper back bend, an Ustrasana camel. So lift the heart up, you can hold the back of the hips and draw the shoulder blades in and up under the heart. Squeeze the buttocks, tone the inner thighs, press the toenails down and you start to tip the head back, breathing, generous breaths. And if you have the urge to reach down to your heels, deepen that back bend while still lifting your heart up, opening the chest as a beautiful heart opener. To release, lift the arms up to the sky, lift up through the thumbs, <laughs> breathe again into the lower back before releasing the hands down and another counter pose and downward dog. Sometimes it's the second or third time you do the pose that it really clicks, that you really have a sense of deeper connection to it. Now, walking forward to the center of the mat, turn towards the side edge of the mat, widen the legs so you have a a long space between the feet and the hands are under the sh on the floor under your shoulders. Inhale, bend the knees, lengthen through the neck and exhale, straighten the legs and fold down with the crown of the head towards the mat. Relaxing on the inhalation, soften. And on the exhalation, press down through the feet and hands, lift up through the navel. Over a series of breaths, you may be able to walk the hands back until the fingertips are in line with the toes. And the elbows bend more deeply into that forward bend. Now walk the hands to the right, bend the right knee, and squat towards that right heel, turning the left toes up.
stay there with hands down or balance with hands in prayer. Anjali Mudra. And switch to the second side, walking hands to the left. And squat towards that left heel, turning the right toes up. Press down through the back of that right heel for stability if you want to balance without hands on the floor and holding Anjali Mudra. Remembering to breathe because balance poses make us a little nervous. Right? Lower the hands and lift the hips and turn back towards the front of the mat. Do come up and stand for warrior one. Step right foot back. Virabhadrasana. Okay. And you have the general form of the pose, and you can deepen the back bending quality by interlacing the hands behind the head as we did earlier, drawing the shoulder blades down and lifting up through the heart, making sure that back leg is totally straight and strong. Nice. Release and rest the arms down. And switch to the other side, right foot forward, left foot back. Now bending the right knee, left leg straight. Raise the arms, Virabhadrasana. Inhale, expand, fill up all the body with a breath. And on the exhalation, squeeze with muscular energy in the core, in the back thigh, hugging the muscles to the bone. And interlace the hands behind the head. Draw the shoulder blades down and lift the heart up. Supercharging that back leg. So you have tons of stability and security through that back leg. No fear of falling. And bring the head up, release the hands down, and step forward. And Let's take the right foot back in Warrior Two. There. I'm going to switch sides. So I face a different direction. And here's Warrior Two. We're opening the arms at shoulder height. Inhale, rolling the shoulders back. And exhale, pulling the navel in, deepening that pose as you're comfortable, bending the left knee. Having equal strength in both legs. Now, take the left arm up, the right arm down into reverse warrior. So stretch towards the back of the mat. Other way. Oh. <laughs> That's all right. Here's where we get into the Gomukhasana arms. We bring the left hand behind the head, cradle the uh, the head and the skull in that left hand, and take the right arm behind the back, reaching up towards the shoulder blades with the right hand. If you want, use a strap and connect the hands or clasp the hands there in your Gomukhasana. So hold the strap in the left hand if you're doing that so that you can reach up with the right, find the other end. And just press the head back against that upper arm. Okay. And enough of that. Straighten the left leg and come into triangle pose. Slide the left hand down that left leg while lifting the right arm up. Inhale, lift up through the right shoulder, draw it back. And exhale, pull in through the navel. Squeeze the muscles and the legs thighs. Okay. 
can use muscular energy for lift and support without needing the friction of the sticky mat. And bend the left knee, release. Okay, switch sides. You can just step forward or do a vinyasa with the hands down, the left foot back. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, low plank. And then inhale to upward dog. So back to downward dog as you exhale. And then you're ready to step right foot forward. Turn the left toes out. And warrior one to the second, warrior two on the second side. Inhale, roll the shoulders back. And exhale, pull the navel in. Deepen the pose with that core strength in the inner thighs and the pelvis and hips. Okay, and to reverse warrior, lift the right arm up, left arm down, or bring the right hand behind the head, cradle the head, or you have the option of holding the strap in the right hand and reaching up from behind with the left. quirky variation here. Now, release the bind and now come into triangle pose. Slide the right hand down the right leg and lift the left arm up. Inhale, draw the left shoulder back and exhale. Squeeze muscular energy through the core, the thighs, even lifting the kneecaps. Generous deep breath. And release and come out. Stepping uh, to seated position. Come down and then open the legs to a wide angle. Spread the toes, draw the lower back in as you lift through the front of the shoulders. And exhale, draw the navel in as you begin to fold forward over the hips. Be generous with that breath. Engage muscular energy in the quads, tops of the thighs. And over a series of breaths, feel where your body is getting the maximum benefit from the pose. And with gratitude, offer that for the benefit of all, the Pushpanjali Mudra. back up. Leave the left leg wide to the side, bending the right knee, bring the right foot over to the inner left thigh and revolve head to knee. So this is Parita Janushirshasana. So take the left hand towards the left ankle, lift the right arm up and you reach up and over the right ear towards the left foot. And you can have options of bringing the left arm inside the left leg, binding the foot. Maybe you have your strap to bind the left foot. 
with the, the arm over the head this way. That's the idea. Good. Breathing along the right side of the waist and the right side of the ribs and long. And when you're finished, release that side and switch legs. Open the right leg wide, bend the left knee. The left foot pressing to the inner right thigh. Now, if you're using the strap, put the loop around the right foot to hold with the left hand. And thread the right shoulder under, lift the left shoulder up and back. Breathe along the left side of the waist and into that left rib cage, bowing that left side of the ribs out to the side. Another variation is to cross the right hand to the left knee and use that to add to the twist. And when you're ready to release, relax and lift out with a coming to uh, Upward facing table. Upward facing table, we we'll just have our, our feet flat on the mat, the hands behind the hips, turning the fingertips out. Tuck the shoulder blades in and lift up the heart. So when you press down the feet, you can bring the hips up to the height of the knees. Inhale, lift up through the heart. And exhale, squeeze in the buttocks, the lower back. Next uh, option is to walk the feet out to more of a plank position. Keeping a slight bend in the knees by really pressing through the heels, squeezing the buttocks. And once more, lifting up through the heart. Release down when you're ready to rest on the buttocks. <laughs> and come into some uh, okay recline onto the back lift up the knees and let's have a hip opener across the right ankle over the left knee and thread the needle with the right arm threading between the legs and clasping hands with the left under the left thigh Inhale, lengthening the arms, and exhale, contracting in the navel. So the breath is unobstructed and uninhibited as it flows in and out. And you can take complete breaths that nourish your entire body and relax any tension, any unnecessary stiffness or clenching. The face and eyes softening. The jaw relaxing. We'll switch sides and to the right foot down, cross the left ankle over the right knee. Threading the needle with the left arm, reach through the legs and clasp hands with the right. The head and shoulders resting on the floor begin to contract in the belly and pull that right knee a little closer to the chest as you exhale. And then relax that tension as you inhale so the breath can once more nourish you generously, fully, and completely. A 
There's more than enough air for everyone. So please use as much as you possibly want. And relaxing that, rest the feet back to the floor. And if you wish to continue using your strap to assist you in this bridge pose, simply put the strap around the front of your ankles and hold the ends of the strap beside the hips. Draw the heels up close to the sitting bones, tuck the shoulder blades under the back, and then push down through the feet, pull back on the strap, and lift the sides of the hips up. And up to bridge pose. You don't have to use the strap. If you want, clasp the hands under the back. Lift up the heart. Squeeze the buttocks. Inhale, expand upward. And exhale, squeeze and hold that height. Now release the hands and lower the buttocks down. And we'll repeat with another bridge pose. Or if you're ready to practice wheel, you can do a um, wheel pose, putting the hands above the shoulders, fingertips pointed towards the shoulder blades. Come up in stages, first lifting the hips, and then coming to the top of the head. Spread the fingers, claw the mat, and then straighten the arms. Pushing up to your wheel. And come out, tuck the chin to the chest. Come to the back of the head first, and then the shoulders, and then the hips down. And take a resting breath. <sighs> and instead of holding poses extra long, we can deepen our relationship with poses by repeating them. So why don't we repeat that one more time? And you may be going twice as far as you did the first time. Coming up and you're ready. The hips up and to the top of the head. And then straightening the arms. Perhaps lowering the heels. <laughs> and to come out, tuck the chin, bring the back of the head, then the shoulders, and then the hips down and rest. You're done. <sighs> Maybe the wrists are a little sore from that. You can put the palms face down underneath the buttocks and the back of the wrists are then being massaged by the hips. Open the knees and cobbler. Hmm. Press the feet together and keep a little bit of an arch in the lower back as you inhale. And exhaling, pull navel to spine. As the hands are held under the buttocks and you pull the elbows gently away from each other, it helps <laughs> release tension in the wrists. Now, remove the hands and just coming to uh, inverted legs. So actually put the hands back under the buttocks and <laughs> maybe with a half fist so that you can lift the legs up and invert the legs. And you can keep the, the hips down on the on the backs of the hands or bring the hips up into your half shoulder stand. 
or inverted action pose, we call it too, where there's an arch in the lower back and the hands are supporting the weight of the hips. Of course, some of you have a practice of shoulder stand and lift the hips a little higher to straighten the back and legs while still preserving the natural curve in the back of the neck by lifting the chin up, pressing the back of the skull down and the back of the elbows down. <laughs> Now, bend the knees, release, and roll the spine back to the ground, one vertebrae at a time, <laughs> until the feet rest comfortably. All right. Now, counter pose, Mats Matsyasana, or fish pose. So take the palms face up under the buttocks, Press the elbows down and lift the chest up so the head tilts back. Back of the head may not even touch the mat or it may just be lightly grazing the floor. Another heart opening pose to really tap into your generous spirit. A deep and nourishing breath. giving your body all the oxygen it needs. And then come out, bring the chin towards the chest and release the spine, resting again flat. Okay, now happy baby, our, one of our favorites. <laughs> so we bring the knees towards the shoulders, either holding the backs of the thighs or the ankles maybe some feet. And sometimes our happy babies like to giggle, roll around, and just generally experiment with these fun bodies that we're given. Let's see what feels good. Gradually lower the feet, keeping the knees bent, widen the feet to the side edges, and open the arms, either cactus or, then twist the knees like windshield wipers over to the right, bringing the left knee towards the right foot. Move the knees up and over to the second side. And then switch the knees back to the first side. If you like, then bring that right heel up to the outside of the left knee to pin that left knee down and stretch a little deeper in the thigh. And release and switch the knees to the second side. Same as before, or crossing the left heel up on top of the right knee. And 
and releasing that side as well. Stretch the legs out and the arms up over the head and symmetrically lengthen from the toes to the fingertips. Good long stretch. Every part of the body expanding on the inhalation and relaxing on the exhalation. And begin to prepare for Shavasana, putting on many, any added sweaters or blankets, and then eventually laying flat on your back, shoulder blades underneath, and the palms face up, taking up all the space you need, enjoying all the breath you could possibly want. Letting your chest open, and the heart expand for the compassion and generosity that's inherent in you to be more expressive. To nourish yourself generously with the breath and release any unnecessary tension, stress, or worries. Just letting them go as you surrender trustfully into the floor. Taking this important time to nourish yourself and let your mind rest from its mental chatter. body and mind ready to relax and let go, sink into this relaxation and savor it. You're a good person with a generous heart, always giving to others. It's time to give to yourself and nourish yourself so that you can continue to be strong for others. Be as generous to yourself as you are to others. You deserve it. Taking time to consciously bring your attention to that guru chakra at the center of your forehead. Paying homage to the lineage of teaching that has brought you to your level of enlightenment. All the teachers in your life, guides, mentors, counselors, pay homage at the Guru Chakra to those that dispel the darkness. Inhale at the center of the forehead and exhale at the center of the forehead. Inhale at the center of the forehead and exhale at the center of the forehead. Inhale at the center of the forehead and exhale at the center of the forehead. Inhale between the eyebrows, the Agna Chakra, and exhale at between the eyebrows. Inhale at the tips of the nostrils and exhale at the tips of the nostrils. 
Inhale at the eyes. And exhale at the eyes. Inhale at the throat center, the Sudaha chakra. And exhale at the throat center. Inhale at the shoulders, nourishing them. And exhale at the shoulders. Inhale at the upper arms. And exhale to the upper arms. Inhale to the elbows. And exhale to the elbows. Inhale to the wrists. And exhale to the wrists. Inhale to the center of the palms. And exhale to the center of the palms. Again, inhaling to the center of the palms. And exhaling to the center of the palms. Inhaling to the wrists. And exhaling to the wrists. Inhaling to the elbows. And exhaling to the elbows. Inhaling to the upper arms. And exhaling at the upper arms. Inhaling to the shoulders. And exhaling to the shoulders. Inhaling to the throat center. And exhaling at the throat center. Inhaling to the heart center. And exhaling to the heart center. Inhaling to the base of the rib cage at the bottom of the sternum. And exhale to the bottom of the rib cage. Inhale to the navel center. And exhale to the navel center. Inhale to the sacral center. And exhale at the sacral center. Inhale to the root center at the base of the spine. And exhale at the root center. Again, inhale at the root center. And exhale at the root center. Inhale to the sacral center. And exhale at the sacral center. Inhale to the navel center. And exhale at the navel center. Inhale to the base of the sternum. And exhale at the base of the sternum. Inhale to the heart center. And exhale at the heart center. Inhale to the throat center. And exhale at the throat center. Inhale to the tips of the nostrils. And exhale to the tips of the nostrils. Inhale to the inner corners of the eyes. And exhale to the corners of the eyes. Inhale to the eyebrow center. And exhale to the eyebrow center. Inhale to the center of the forehead. And exhale to the center of the forehead. Inhale to the crown of the head. And exhale to the crown of the head. 
Inhale again to the crown of the head and exhale to the crown of the head. Inhale once more to the crown of the head and exhale again at the crown of the head. Relax your attention, soften your awareness to breathe again as your whole body breathes. Softening on the inhale, relaxing, letting go as you exhale. Resting, calm, content, happy, and satisfied. Knowing you've done something good for yourself. And just feeling good about yourself for being a good person with a generous heart. Start to deepen your breath and become aware of the body once more and ask the muscles to start to awaken, stretch, move, and eventually find your way over to your side in a fetal position, ready to come back into a conscious state, awake and alert, and ready to sit up in an easy seated pose. Did a terrific practice today and I sense your generosity has magnified and expanded. I bow to that spirit of generosity in each of you. Namaste.